Hello, it's me, Kamran Zare from Landrum Middle School here in Spring Branch ISD. We're in the new Landrum Middle School, Landrum 2.0, and uh, Spring Branch ISD is in Houston, Texas. So, what we're going to do is take a look at uh, another machine, and this happens to be a radial arm saw. This radial arm saw is uh, from the original saw company. Uh, its model number is 3531-01-230, and it is a Type 5. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through uh, all the parts of the machine, and then I'm going to discuss uh, how to use the machine with, uh, correctly. Uh, this is a real simple and straightforward machine, uh, not super complicated, but if you're not paying close attention to what you should be doing, uh, it can be extremely dangerous. So, let me first go over the parts. So, uh, you may or may not be able to see it in the frame, but this is all sitting on a base. It's a black metal base, and so those legs are called the base. Coming up from the base, the first thing that we see is going to be this little module right here which has three buttons, it is the power switch. We have a red circle, which is for off. We have a green one, which is for on. And then we have this emergency shut off button. So let me just quickly demonstrate what this does so you're aware. The green button turns it on. The red button turns it off. But if I press this larger red button, I can no longer turn this on at all. So if there's an emergency, you can easily, with your leg or hip, bump into this button to shut the thing off really quickly, rather than reaching down and pressing it with your fingers. So the only way to turn this back on is we have to pull the red button out until we can see the ridges behind it, and then we can go ahead and operate the machine just like normal. So this is the power button area, or the on-off. Then we have this flat surface, which is where we're going to be placing our piece of material as we're cutting. This is called the table. And we have a vertical wall at the back end of the table, and this is called a fence. Okay, so our piece of wood always has to be flat on the table and held firmly up against the fence before we start cutting anything. All right? Now, behind all of these guards is our blade. So behind the fence, behind this guard, behind this guard, we can see this red circular object. This is our blade, okay? And it's surrounded by guards to help protect us and also to make sure that uh, our hands are not too close to where uh, they should be, okay? And then you obviously saw that I'm bringing this entire blade assembly forward by using this thing right here, which is called the handle, okay? Below the handle, we have a, a gauge for angles because we can adjust the angles, tilting it left and right. Uh, but that's not something my students are going to be doing. Okay, That's something that I might do for them. So we've got the handle. Above the handle, we have this arm. This is the reason why it's called the radial arm saw. And so this is the track that the entire blade assembly travels along as you're cutting. So we have the arm. Okay, The other thing that we need to be aware of is back here, we have the height adjustment. And so if I turn this, I can make the whole arm assembly rise, or I can lower it down, okay? So the important thing that you need to pay attention to is if you're not sure, look on the back, there's a sticker that says clockwise is to lower, counterclockwise is to raise, and then whatever it is you want to do, you will turn this handle in order to get it higher or lower, okay? And then, one other thing that you're going to need to use anytime you're here, other than a tape measure to mark where you're going to cut, is a square. So this is called a tri-square, and you're going to see me use it, and I'll explain why I use it. Okay, so I'll leave that here. Now, let me quickly just recap all of the parts that you need to be aware of. Below here, we have the base. We have the power switch here. We have the table here. Fence is right here. This is the blade. Okay, behind all these guards. Then we have the handle, which allows us to bring the blade forward. And then we also have the arm, and then the height adjustment. Okay? This machine is also connected to the dust collection system. So anytime we use a machine that's connected to the dust collection system, we would want to make sure to open the door, and I'll make that part of one of our steps here. Okay? So, 
Now let's take a look at how to use this machine. Just like any other machine in a woodworking shop, you need to make sure that you take care of all your personal safety items. So I go over basic five safety items with my students, uh, and that is you got to wear your safety glasses. Number two is you got to make sure your hair is tied back. Of course, that's not an issue for me. Number three is any loose dangling jewelry needs to be removed. Necklaces, bracelets, rings, anything that might get hung up in the machine needs to be removed. And then we need to make sure that if we have long billowing shirts or anything that is super baggy, we need to tuck that stuff in. That way we don't get our clothes ripped off uh, and have to walk around naked for the rest of the day. Uh, and then the last thing is, is we can't wear any sweaters or jackets. We need to see you clear from your fingertips to your elbow. That way none of those parts of your clothing get hung up in a machine as well. Now, before we get to this machine, we always have to have a plan. Okay, and a plan for this machine would be how far or how long do I want to cut a piece of wood? Okay, so what is the length that I need to cut? So I just have a, a regular old stock piece of wood here. Uh, this is just scrap. And so what I would want to do is I would want to take my measurement or tape measure and measure off the length that I want to cut. Okay, I'm not going to actually measure anything because I'm just doing a demonstration. So I am simply going to just place a mark. Okay, just place a mark so I can see, okay, that, that's probably where I want to cut, and that's fine, all right? Once I have an idea of exactly where I want to cut, I'm going to grab a square. If the square is here, great. If the square is not here, you'd have to get off the tool cart. And what I would do is take the handle of the square, set it flat against the top edge of the piece of wood. Now, a square does you do no good if you don't have the handle flat against your surface. And once I do that, the blade of this square will give me a perfect 90 degree angle, and we will have a perpendicular line that goes across our piece of wood like that. So this tells me that's exactly where I want to cut. So I'm going to take my square and I'm going to set it to the side. I'm also going to put my pencil away. I never want to be holding on to too many things here. Just the piece of wood and the handle is all I need to worry about when I'm at this machine. Then, whenever I use this machine, because it's connected to the dust collector, <clears throat> before I turn it on, what I want to do is walk over here, open up the dust collector door, and then, obviously, I would need to turn on the dust collector. I'm not actually going to turn it on for this demonstration because the dust collector button is across the shop, and I'm just going to make a quick cut, so I'm not going to make too big of a mess. But if you were going to use it, you would need to make sure that you turn on the dust collector yourself. And then when we're done, turn it off, close the door, clean up. Now, if this is where I want to cut, I need to kind of think about how this is going to work out. Because if I pull this blade out, I can see that this blade is not just a single small little line. It has a thickness to it, or the kerf of this blade. So I have to figure out, do I want to cut right on the line, if I do that, will I have the correct length that I was looking for? Or do I need to cut on the left side of the line or the right side of the line? And in this case, I want to keep this short section. So what that means is that blade has to sit on the left side of this line. So that way, the thickness of my blade does not cut away from this section of wood that I want to keep. Okay. So, I want the right side of the blade to just barely touch that line, just kiss it, okay? So, once I've figured out, okay, I want my blade on the left side of the line, I'm then going to place my piece of wood flat on the table, and I'm going to bring it flat up against the fence, okay? Then, I can kind of line it up with my eye and see where is the blade, where is the line, because I'm standing directly in front of the cut line. And what I want to do is just carefully and slowly pull the blade forward. I haven't turned the machine on, and I'm going to line up the tooth of the blade, or the teeth of the blade, with the line that I'm trying to cut. Remember, I want the teeth of the blade to be the left side of my line that I drew. Once I have it exactly where I need it, I'm going to make sure this goes all the way back. I'm going to Place my hand, okay, notice every time I let go of one hand, I'm holding on with the other, that way my piece of wood doesn't move. I'm going to place my hand away from all these guards, 
If any of these guards are touching my hand, my fingers are way too close. I never want my hands close to the cut line and certainly never should cross the cut line. I'm going to hold on, making sure that the piece of wood is firmly placed up against the fence, and then I'm ready to cut. However, because I'm right-handed, the way I like to do this is hold with my left hand against the fence, nice and tight, and I step out to the side, and I turn the machine on, then I step back forward, standing directly in front of the cut line, grab onto the handle, and slowly pull forward to cut my piece of wood off. This is not a machine that you use quickly. Use it nice and slow, nice and easy. There's no rush. As soon as I see that it's cut all the way through, I slowly let it drift back behind the fence. Also, be careful not to hit your head on, on the arm here. So here I go. I'm going to demonstrate this process. Once this blade comes to a complete stop, then I can remove anything that I've cut and I can remove my material from the table. So here's my block of wood that I've cut. Now that I have completed making my cross cut, all I have to do next is simply close the dust collector door, clear off all of the sawdust from the table, and then sweep all the sawdust that's on the ground and clean up my area. Very simple, straightforward machine, but of course, if you're not paying attention, fingers are crossing that cut line or they're too close to the blade, you got a problem. Now, one last piece of information. Anytime you are cutting, you always want to make sure that once you've placed your piece of wood up on the fence and on the table and you've checked where it's going to line up with the blade, you never, ever, ever want this piece of wood to move until the machine has gone through the cutting process and it's come to a complete stop. Don't want to slide the piece of wood left and right while the blade is moving and touching the wood. You don't want to move away from the fence because what's happening is this blade is spinning in that direction. Okay, so what it's going to do is try to pull everything towards the back of the machine. And if your hand is holding on to it and you don't let go fast enough and you move this piece of wood, it's going to bind and it's going to try to throw your piece of wood back and it's going to take your hand with it. So never, ever, ever move the piece of wood once you have it set up and once the machine is moving. Okay? So that's extremely important. And if you ever make that mistake, I guarantee you, you're going to be scared and you're going to have to count to make sure you got all your fingers left on your hands. But all kind of joking aside, very simple machine. So hopefully I've explained it to you. And so hopefully. Uh, my students who missed the explanation in person, you guys can pass the safety test on this machine. So, I appreciate it. You guys, uh, good luck.